for a day to go to Afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon. How are you today? Mm. Very good. Very good. Nice to hear that. And um, have you finished the platform? Do you have any question about any exercise? Todavía no, no lo hemos terminado. Ok, um, ¿tiene pregunta con algún ejercicio o más o menos por dónde va? No, hasta donde he llegado estamos bien. Ok, perfecto. Ya bueno. vamos en la parte final. Ok, excelente. Entonces vamos bien, um, en dos días terminamos el curso, entonces es importante um, si tienen alguna pues eh, pregunta o duda con algún ejercicio o con algún tema, todavía tenemos tiempo para repasar y me lo hacen saber para poder preparar algún repaso o ejercicios adicionales. Sí, claro. Ok, el día de viernes, el, el, no, fue el martes, el último día de clase, vimos las cartas de Fantapo y... Um, Vimos, uh, so, no sé si tienen alguna pregunta de esto, le puedo compartir pantalla para que pueda recordar. ¿Sí es que my screen? Hello. Hi. You can see it now. Yes. Okay, so we were uh, practicing about the uses of some and any. Do you remember? Yes. Okay. Entonces, vimos cómo usamos some. Dijimos que some se usa para... Para oraciones afirmativas. Para oraciones afirmativas. Uh -huh. Y también se puede utilizar en preguntas. Son, se puede usar en preguntas también y en oración afirmativa. Donde no podemos usar son es en oraciones negativas. Para negativas usamos el en. En en any. Any. Ajá, so, para negativas utilizamos any y también en preguntas. Aquí las preguntas que tenemos como ejemplo las tenemos con any. ¿sá? Um, pero pues también podemos preguntar con son. De ahí en cuanto a oraciones, son para afirmativas y any para negativas. Um, vamos a ver si... Tenemos este ejercicio que lo tienen en su material que nos cargaron de la plataforma. Eh, it's a complete the conversation with some or any. Uh -huh. Vamos a completar este utilizando some or any. Um, the store doesn't have... Ahí se ha utilizado any porque estamos haciendo una eh, oración negativa, ¿verdad? Porque dice que no tiene. The store doesn't have any potato salad. So, um, to continue the conversation, it will be, well, we have lots of potatoes. Let's make any some. Mm -hmm. Son porque dice vamos a hacer, vamos a hacer un poco, vamos a hacer algo. Let's make some. Hasta que no, bueno, pero tenemos muchas papas. Eh, vamos a hacer un poco de lo que están hablando que es la ensalada de papas. Um, well, we have lots of potatoes. Let's make some. And then, okay, do we have uh, any? Any. Mm -hmm. so any mayonnaise? Do we have any mayonnaise? No. We need to buy some. 
some, ajá, excelente. A veces nos confundimos aquí porque vemos el no al principio, pero si ven, ahí termina pues la negación no, coma, y luego pues hacemos otra oración en la que afirmamos que necesitamos un poco. We need to buy some, necesitamos comprar. Entonces, esto es una oración afirmativa, necesitamos comprar algo de lo que pues ya se mencionó antes, que es la mayonesa. No, we need to buy some. And we need onions too, some or any. Some. Excellent, yes, some. Uh, we need some onions too. Oh, I don't want onions. I hate onions. I don't want any. Excellent. I don't want any onions. Negative. I don't want any onions. I hate onions. Then let's get celery. Some. Some. Uh -huh. Porque entonces pongámosle algo de apio. Let's get some celery. I don't want any. Any. Excellent. I don't want any celery in my potato salad. But let's put Apples in it. Some or any? Let's some. Yes, yeah, some. But let's put some. You know, yes. Vamos a ponerle. Vamos a ponerle. Let's put. Let's put some apples in it. Mm, apples in potato salad? That sounds awful. Awful is like disgusting. Um, Asqueroso, disgusting, that's awful. Okay, so let's read this conversation. It says, the store doesn't have any potato salad. Well, we have lots of potatoes. Let's make some. Okay, do we have any mayonnaise? No, we need to buy some. We need some onions too. Oh, I don't want any onions. I hate onions. Then, let's get some celery. No, I don't want any celery in my potato salad. But let's put some apples in it. Apples in potato salad? That sounds awful. All right, do we have volunteers to role play this conversation? Let's practice. Or do you have any question about pronunciation or vocabulary? Juan Carlos. A volunteer to practice with Juan Carlos? Me. I think it's Roberto, okay? Okay. Go ahead. You can start, Juan Carlos. Okay. The store doesn't have any potato salad. Well, we have lots of potatoes. Let's make some. Okay. Do we have any mayonnaise? No, we need to buy some. We need some onions too. Oh, I don't want any onions. I hate onions. Onion. Then let's get some celery. No, I don't want any celery in my potato salad. But uh, let's put some apples in it. Apples. Apples. <laughs> apples in potato salad? That's some awful. Excellent. You did it very good. Now you can change. Now Roberto start. The store doesn't have any potato salad. Well, we have lots of potato. Let's make some. Okay. Do we have any mayonnaise? No, we need to buy some. We need some onions too. Oh, I don't want any onions. I hate onions. 
Then let's get some celery. No, I don't want any celery in my potato salad. But let's put some apples in it. Apple, apples in potato salad. That sounds awful. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. Now let's review. And this is onions. Onion. Onion. Uh -huh. Onion. Okay. That's the best one. And then apple. Apple. Mm -hmm. apple. Celery. Celery. S A igual celery. Con celery. Uh, apples. Y aquí awful. Awful. That sounds awful. Well, you did it oh. pretty good. Thank you so much for participating. Do we have two more volunteers before we continue? Yes, two more. Two more. Erica, thank you so much. Who wants to practice with Erica? Uh, volunteer to role play with Erica? Ernesto, thank you so much. Okay, teacher. Uh, the East the East doesn't have any potato 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 salad. Potato salad. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, we have lots of potatoes. Let's make some. Okay, do we have any mayonnaise? No, we need to boil some. We need some onions too. Oh, I don't want any, any onions. I have onions. Yes, let, let's get, let's go some celery. No, I don't want any celery in my potato in my potato salad. But let's put some apples no. in it. And now but see, <laughs> but let's put some apples in it. Uh, apple in potato salad. That song, I would. That sound sounds that, awful. That sound awful. That sound awful. That sounds awful. Okay, now okay. change. You can change now. The Easter doesn't have the any potato salad. Well, we have a lot of potato. Let's make some. Okay. Do do we have any mayonnaise? Mayonnaise? No, we need to buy to buy some. We need some onions too. Oh, I don't want any onions. I hate onions. Then then get some celery. No, I don't want any celery in my potato salad, but let's put some apple in it. Apple? Apple in Ap it. Apples in potato salad? That sounds awful. Okay, pretty good. Thank you so much. Thank you for participating. It is pretty good. Now, then after that, we have a uh, completed chart with food from exercise one on page 58 with countable and non countable nouns. So, as you can see here, we have uh, uh, the food pyramid and um, la pirámide de alimentos que vimos aquí. Entonces, nos pide el ejercicio que pongamos eh, comidas. Contables y no contables. Recuérdense que dijimos que los contables son los que tienen un plural en inglés. Los no contables no tienen plural. Si se fijan en los no contables está el 
broccoli. El broccoli es incontable en inglés. Eh, potato, potatoes. Ella tiene plural, entonces eh, las papas sí son contables porque tienen un plural. Eh, y puede surgir, pero porque el brócoli no es contable. La palabra brócoli, como les repito, no tiene plural en inglés. Si queremos hablar de cantidad en brócoli, eh, se cuenta como por cabeza. Entonces, eh, so you can say, I need two heads of broccoli. So you can say, I need two heads of broccoli. El plural ahí es la, la cabeza. I need two heads of broccoli. Uh, o si lo van a comprar por libra, sería, I need uh, two pounds of broccoli. Las libras sí podemos contarlas, podemos contar las cabezas, pero la palabra en sí, broccoli, no tiene plural, así como decíamos también de la palabra money. ¿Se acuerdan que también discutíamos que money eh, no es plural? No, no, no tiene plural. Entonces, money es uncountable. Podemos contar monedas, coins, um, quarters, cents, dollars, but the word money itself, esto no tiene plural. Um, So, what do you think? For example, vamos a hacer algunos. Cream, is that countable or uncountable? Cream, what do you think? Uncountable. Excellent. Cream is uncountable. We cannot count it. Uh, butter? Uncountable. Uncountable. Es incontable. Uh, yeah. Oil. Uncountable. Uncountable. Uh -huh. uh, candy. Candy. Mm. Can I say two candies? Yeah. Yes, yes, candy has plural in English. Candy, candy, tiene plural. Um, potato chips. Los chips. What do you think? That word is plural, so we can put it like a countable thing. Now, fish, what do you think? Is that countable or uncountable? Fish, okay. chicken, beef. So what do you think about fish? Chicken and beef, are they countable or uncountable? Hello? Chicken, countable. Beef, uncountable. Beef, uncountable. And fish, chicken, they are uncountable as well. La palabra fish, es chicken y beef, es incontable. Se puede pescar como por libra, por piezas, etc., pero ellos no tienen plural. Lo que es fish, chicken, and beef, they do not have plural. Eh, lo mismo decía el video, ¿verdad?, con respecto a los líquidos como milk. Milk no tiene plural. Podemos contar los litros, los vasos de leche, pero la palabra en sí leche es, es incontable. Yogurt también es incontable. Cheese es incontable. And then we have uh, bananas, apples, mangoes, strawberries, and oranges. What do you think? Este grupo de frutas es contable o incontable.
Contable. contable. Yes, they are contable. Uh -huh. Uh, tienen todas, tienen su, ahí están en plural, también tienen ellas su palabra singular, like banana, apple, orange, strawberry, yeah, y tienen plural, they are countable. Eh, about vegetables, broccoli, ya vimos que es uncountable. What about carrots? Carrots? Countable. Yes, countable. Lettuce? Lettuce happens the same as broccoli. Con la lechuga pasa lo mismo que con el brócoli. Es incontable. No tiene plural. Eh, podemos contar las hojas, las eh, cabezas, o si lo venden por libra, pues las libras. Pero la palabra en sí, lettuce, es incontable. Igual que broccoli. Then, tomatoes and potatoes, they are contable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. eh, red, creo que fue el último que discutimos. ¿Se recuerdan si dijimos que era contable o uncountable? Uncount yeah. Contable. Yeah. Uncountable. Podemos contar las piezas, pieces of bread, las slices eh, o las entero el log. Pero en la palabra empty bread, uncountable. Eh, cereal. Uncountable. Correct. Crackers. Countable. Correct. Rice. Uncountable. Uncountable. Yes. Noodles. ¿Cuánto? Mm, the word itself is like, yes, it's in plural, so it can be, um, uh, yes, it's a plural word, it's like noodles, so yes. Then pasta. Can we say pastas? I have never seen that, so I would say that it's incontable. And then, now you have a better idea. Veo, hicieron esta conversación, pues, excelente. Y también tienen una mejor idea de cómo diferenciar los countable and non-countable. Yes. Um, then we have this snapshot. Is, uh, this is vocabulary. What do you have for breakfast? En este vocabulario tenemos como, eh, es bastante útil porque son eh, más bien comidas o que se, eh, podemos ver comúnmente en, um, para el desayuno, para breakfast. So, let's see, in the U.S., when you said U.S., is United States. Ese es un desayuno pues, de lo más común en, en, en Estados Unidos, in the U.S. They can have eggs, bacon, toast with butter, oranges, coffee, jam, and or jelly. Hay alguna palabra de esas que no conozcan el significado? Jam and jelly. Oh, uh, jam and jelly is la uh, mermelada. Mermelada o jalea. Nosotros mm. le decimos jalea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other new word? Any other? Okay, so we can read back again. Eggs, bacon, toast with butter, oranges, coffee, 
jam, jelly. Okay, let's look at Japan. Uh, traditional Japanese breakfast would include fish, rice, soup, pickles, green tea. Is the vocabulary clear? Pickles. Eh, pickles eh, son los encurtidos. Eh, usualmente... Eh, bueno, los pepinillos. Los pepinillos son pickles. Eh, y a lo que vaya como encurtido se dice pickles. Ellos comen, consumen bastante... ¿Cómo se llama? Jengibre. Y jengibre así como encurtido y yeah, pickles. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Fish, rice, soup, pickles, and green tea. Now let's look at the traditional Mexican breakfast. They have eggs, beans, tortilla, fresh fruit, Good breath, coffee with milk. Any question about that vocabulary? No question. Okay, so we can continue with the conversation titled Fish for Breakfast. Let me stop sharing so that we can watch the video from the platform. Hi everyone. In this class you'll learn about common breakfast foods in different countries. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates some cultural differences in food. Let's get started by learning what people in the U.S., Japan, and Mexico eat for breakfast. What do you have for breakfast? The U.S. Eggs Bacon Toast with butter Orange juice Coffee Jam, jelly, Japan, fish, rice, soup, pickles, green tea, Mexico, eggs, beans, tortillas, fresh fruit, sweet bread. Coffee with milk. So what do you have for breakfast? Next, what I would like for you to do is to listen to a conversation which illustrates this topic. Let's listen and practice. Fish for breakfast? Let's have breakfast together on Sunday. Okay, come to my house. My family always has a Japanese-style breakfast on Sundays. Really? What do you have? We usually have fish, rice, and soup. Fish for breakfast? That's interesting. Sometimes we have a salad, too, and we always have green tea. Well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like to try new things. Now it's your turn to practice this conversation along with the vocabulary. You may watch this video as many times as necessary. I would also like for you to answer the following question in our discussion forums. What do you have for breakfast?
Okay, this is the conversation that you just heard. Um, do you have any question about this conversation? Ernesto? A volunteer to practice with Ernesto, Juan Carlos? I guess. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who start? You can start, Juan Carlos. Okay, thank you. Let's have, have breakfast together on Sunday. Okay, come to my house. My family always has hot Japanese style breakfast on Sundays. Really? What do you have? We usually have fish, rice, and salt. Fish for breakfast? That's interesting. Sometimes we have a salad, a salad too. And we always have green tea. Well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like to try new. I can Things. Not see. Okay. Okay, nice. thank you. But I like to try new things. Excellent. Just one word that it's usually difficult is Japanese. Japanese. Yes, Japanese. Now you can change. You can start now, Ernesto. Okay. Let's let's have breakfast together on Sunday. Okay. Come to my house. My family always has a Japanese style breakfast on Sundays. Really? What did you have? We usually have fish, rice, and soup. Fish for breakfast? That is telling say. Sometimes we have a salad too, and we always have green tea. Well, I never fish for breakfast, but I like to try new thing. things. Excellent. Thank Very good. Thank you so much for practicing. Do we have two more volunteers? Yo. Okay, Jose. And who wants to help Jose? Edwin, thank you so much. Okay, you can okay. start, Jose. Okay. Let's have breakfast together on Sunday. Okay, come to my house. My family always has a Japanese style breakfast on Sundays. Really? What do you have? We usually have fish, rice, and soup. Fish for breakfast? Thanks, interesting. Sometimes we have a salad too, and we always have green tea. Well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like to try new things. Okay, uh, let's review only three words. It was very, very nice, but we need to review here. Um, let's repeat. Soup. 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 Uh -huh. Soup. Soup. La O, olvidamos la soup. Soup. And then, esta palabra siempre es bien difícil, pero pues hay que practicar bastante porque como se parece al español, pero, eh, uh, porque en español es interesante y es como que lleva una fuerza de voz casi al final interesante, pero interesting. Eh, interesting. Ajá, en, en inglés el acento o la, o la fuerza es en la primera es la interesting. Y la primera E, la primera E, haga de cuenta que no existe. Interesting. Interesting. Excelente, interesting. Y luego esta pues suena así, try, try, 
try. Uh huh. But I like to try new things. But I like to try new things. Excellent. Now we can change, Edwin. You can start. Okay. Let's have breakfast together on Sunday. Okay. Come to my house. My family always has a Japanese style breakfast on Sunday. Really? What do you have? We usually have fish, rice, and soup. Fish for breakfast? That's interesting. Some side we have a salad too, and we always have green tea. Well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like to try new things. Excellent. You did it excellent. Thank you so much for practicing. Now, we're going to continue then with the next part, which is the grammar practice. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm in the platform again. And we're going to watch this video about the adverb of frequency. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn how to use adverbs of frequency when talking about food. Let's get started by analyzing the examples on the chart. Adverbs of frequency. I always eat breakfast. I usually eat breakfast. I often eat breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast. I hardly ever eat breakfast. I never eat breakfast. Sometimes I eat breakfast. Do you ever have fish for breakfast? Yes, I always do. Sometimes I do. No, I never do. Always. Usually. Often. Sometimes. Hardly ever. Never. Let me start by explaining what adverbs of frequency are and how we can categorize them. Adverbs of frequency are words that come before the verbs and they express frequency. For example, if you would like to express that you take a shower every day, 100% of the time, that will be always, you can use adverbs of frequency for that. For example, I always take a shower. This means I take a shower 100% of the time. If you would like to express that you never smoke cigarettes, uh, this means 0% of the time. You can use adverbs of frequency for that. For example, I never smoke cigarettes. This means 0% of the time. The easiest way to categorize adverbs of frequency is by giving each a percentage number. So let's do just that. Always equals 100%. Usually equals 80%. Often equals 70%. Sometimes equals 50%. Hardly ever equals 25%. Never equals 0%. Next, I would like to explain how to use them and in which order to use them. Typically, we will use adverbs of frequency after the pronoun or subject. We can follow this formula. Subject plus adverb of frequency plus the verb plus some kind of complement. Let's analyze a couple of examples. I always eat breakfast. The subject is I. The adverb of frequency is always. The verb is eat. And the complement is breakfast. I 
sometimes eat breakfast. The subject is I. The adverb of frequency is sometimes. The verb is eat. And the complement is breakfast. I would like to show an exception to this rule. If you notice the example, sometimes I eat breakfast. With the adverb of frequency, sometimes, you may put that at the beginning, just like you see on the example. Sometimes I eat breakfast. You may also say, I sometimes eat breakfast. Just like we've learned in this class by putting the adverb of frequency after the subject. And finally, you may say the following. I eat breakfast sometimes. You can put the adverb of frequency at the end of your sentence. The last point that I would like to touch in this class is how to form questions and answers about frequency. Let's start by understanding how to form questions. You may follow this formula, auxiliary do or does, plus the subject, plus ever, plus the verb, plus some kind of complement. Let's take a look at the example question now. Do you ever have fish for breakfast? The uh, auxiliary verb is do. After that, we have the subject you. Then we will add ever. Next, we will add the, a verb have. Finally, we need to add a complement fish for breakfast. And we can answer this type of question in different ways. For example, yes, I always do sometimes I do no I never do now is your time to practice by giving lots of examples of your own I would like for you to think about food particularly the type of food you eat for breakfast lunch and dinner and express how often you eat this type of food. For example, I always drink coffee for breakfast. I, I never drink coffee for dinner. I hardly ever eat fish for lunch. I never eat fish for breakfast. After you finish this activity, please share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, thank you so much for letting me know. Gracias. Um, decir? Okay, tenemos que chequear asistencia, pero antes, 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 quisiera saber si el video está claro la explicación de cómo formar oraciones eh, o el significado de los adverbios de frecuencia o cómo formar preguntas. Sintieron que el video está. Es bastante fácil, está claro, o sienten que necesitamos hacer un poco más de en práctica o explicación, ejercicio. How do you feel with that? Teacher, I think we need the, the information that the, how do you say tema? 
topic. Topic. Okay. Very good. So you need more information about the topic, more explanations and exercises. We will do, no worries. Um, but first we're going to check attendance and then well, I think that we can check it. Yeah. Okay, so let me show you my screen. Vamos a ver. Estos adverbios de frecuencia se conocen también como indefinidos. Si ustedes vieron acá, a ver, vamos a compartir desde el material. Uh, acá tenemos, uh, so you say the adverse of frequency, and we have always, y ven aquí que dice 100%, ¿verdad? Luego, usually, often, sometimes, hardly ever, and never. Siendo always and, y never son opuestos, digamos, always es como algo que sucede siempre, 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 sin excepción, y never es algo que sucede el 0% de la fecha. Ahora, acá, okay, acá tenemos más, más o menos y hay otros adverbios de frecuencia que uh, también podemos mencionar acá y para que tengan una idea como un poco más clara de, de um, a qué equivalen. Estos, como ven acá arriba, dice adverbs of Indefinite frequency. Okay. Ellos okay. no tienen. Hola. Ok, no tienen una frecuencia exacta, como decir, yo hago esto tres veces por semana. Yo tomo café una vez al día. Mm, no. Estos son como más indefinidos, solo nos pueden dar una idea de que tan seguido. Los únicos, digamos, que nos dan una idea bien um, exacta son always y never. Cuando eso solo significa como un aproximado eh, en número, sería lo que está ahí en porcentaje. Por ejemplo, si yo utilizo always para referirme a algo que yo, eh, digamos, hago sin falta toda la vida, es, es siempre, siempre igual, entonces puedo usar always. Porque me estoy refiriendo a algo que sucede eh, todo el tiempo, como decir, um, I always drink coffee. Yo no recuerdo un día que no haya tomado café, entonces pues I always drink coffee, or I always drink coffee in the morning and in the afternoon. Eh, si es algo que sucede casi como un 90% de las veces, Aquí nos da como un aproximado en números, ¿verdad? Como si fuera el 90% de veces, podríamos decir, I usually have bread with my coffee. No siempre, no todas, pero sí, digamos que usualmente eh, acompañamos el café con un pancito, pero a veces, pues, no, por dieta, porque no hay, por lo que sea. Entonces, de repente, no, no, no es toda la vida, no es el 100% del tiempo, pero pues bastante que es como un 90% y digo usually. I usually have a bread with my coffee. Normally or generally, they, uh, they mean like a 80%, del, como un 80% del tiempo de las veces. Luego tenemos often, que equivale como un 70%. El sometimes, que sería como un 50%, como la mitad del tiempo. Por ejemplo, digamos, ¿cuántos días tiene la semana? La semana tiene siete días, ¿verdad? Y si de esos siete días yo tres días o cuatro hago ejercicio, entonces puedo usar sometimes. Puedo decir, I sometimes do exercise. Uh -huh. Porque digamos que es, es como la mitad del tiempo, podría ser un 50, es, es bastante, podemos usar something. O bueno, si ya fueran cuatro días de la semana, tal vez podemos usar often or frequently. Now, occasionally is like a 30%. Seldom es, es muy, más bajo, es 10% más o menos en el número de veces. Hardly ever y rarely es como un 5% del tiempo. Y 0% never. 
Ahí tienen ejemplos también usando cada uno de los adverbs de frequency. Fíjese, I always brush my teeth at night. Usted no falla siempre, siempre, siempre se cepilla los dientes en la noche. Podemos usar always. I always brush my teeth at night. I usually walk to work. Puede ser que de repente eh, usualmente camina al trabajo, pero pues de repente por alguna razón iba a tarde agarró el bus, entonces ya no podemos usar always, usamos usually. And then we have normally. I normally get good marks. Eso es normalmente tengo buenas notas. Es no normal. Pero pues, ven, si estoy usando esto porque es algo que estoy como un 80% del tiempo. Eh, often, I often read in bed at night. I sometimes sing in the shower. I occasionally go to bed late. I seldom add salt to my food. I hardly ever get angry at vegetarian, never eat meat. Les voy a mandar esto al grupo del chat para que pues les quede con los ejemplos y lo que hemos hablado. Y luego, pues si de repente tienen tiempo de transcribirlo a su cuaderno, pues sería excelente, ya que pues a veces pues si no más queda ahí en el, si no más queda en el celular, no, no, no tiene chiste, ¿verdad? De repente transcribirlo al cuaderno, tal vez lo revisamos de vez en cuando. Y ahí está, se los acabo de mandar ya al chat de WhatsApp para que les quede ahí la información que acabamos de ver. Gracias, teacher. Esto está bien, bien completo. Bueno, uh -huh. sí, está bien. De bastante refuerzo. Gracias. Ok, está la orden. Y pues eh, recuerden eh, la estructura y también se mencionaba que hay un adverbio de esos que puede ir al inicio de una oración. Usualmente la estructura de una oración decía en el video que es subject. Y luego del subject decía que va un adverbio de frecuencia. O frequency. Luego del adverbio de frecuencia que decía que va. El verbo. No. Uh -huh. Y luego del verbo complemento. Esto es para hacer una oración usando un adverbio de frecuencia. Uh, so you can say I, I sometimes um, So you can say, I sometimes read the Bible before bed. Puede decir que algunas veces leí la Biblia antes de, de dormirse. I sometimes read the Bible before bed. Y pueden ver sujeto, I. Adverb of frequency, sometimes. Luego el verbo que sería read. Y luego el complemento, the Bible before bed. Ahora, Sometimes es una excepción, también usually, en el video solo mencionan sometimes, pero usually también puede ir al inicio de una oración y solamente ahí se cambia, eh, pongo sometimes, sometimes I, ahí siempre va mayúscula, sometimes I read the Bible before bed. A esto se refería con que sometimes puede iniciar la oración. Esta es una excepción. Quiere decir que solamente sometimes y también usually pueden ir al inicio. De lo contrario, si vamos a usar always, often, never, hardly ever, eh, cualquiera que no sea sometimes, ellos sí tienen que seguir esta estructura. No se pueden mover. 
Solamente si se trata de sometimes, podemos moverlo al inicio de la oración y también usual. Entonces, eh, quedamos sometimes. Y el otro que puede iniciar una oración. Usually. Esos son los únicos que son excepción. Esto era con respecto a la formulación de oraciones utilizando adverbios de frecuencia. Les puedo mandar también la captura por si quieren. Esto es para oración. Pero le podemos poner ahí que es un... Aclarando que es la estructura de oración. Gente. Okay, so I send it through the WhatsApp. Les mandé la estructura de las oraciones ahorita. Entonces, bueno, podríamos practicar haciendo unas oraciones. Y vamos a seguir con uh -huh. Okay, so we have this, um, it says like, making sentences. It says, I, y tenemos todo. Aquí pues nada más es que ponerle a dónde iría, pero pues vamos a hacer algunas oraciones respecto a nuestra rutina diaria utilizando los adverbs que tienen ahí. Always, usually, often, sometimes, hardly ever, and never. So I can say I. Okay. Um, vamos a hacer un par de oraciones. Por ejemplo, pueden decir uh, con lo que acabamos de ver aquí del vocabulario de las comidas. Eh, podemos hacer, por ejemplo, bacon. Ay, ¿qué tan seguido puedo comer tocino en el um, desayuno? Podría decir sometimes. I sometimes eat bacon for breakfast. I sometimes eat bacon for breakfast. Uh, otro que aparezca por ahí, tal vez uh, decir soup. I never, I never have soup for breakfast. Oh, nunca, hasta ahorita nunca he, he tenido sopa por desayuno. So I can say, I never, I never have soup for breakfast. So I'll give you time for you to build at least three sentences, al menos unas tres oraciones, como las que les acabo de dar como ejemplo, y luego las compartimos con la clase. Las pueden anotar en su cuaderno y luego compartimos. Pues voy a dar tiempo.
quickly finished. Yes. I volunteer to share. Yes, I. Can I, can I share? Sure. You can read your sentence. Thank you, Jose. Okay. Um, I always drive to my work. I sometimes eat so breakfast. I never sleep the last the last day of my work. Okay, excellent. Very nice job. They are grammatically correct. Thank you so much for sharing, Juan Carlos. You're welcome. Any other? Any other volunteer? Algo otro voluntario para leer sus oraciones? Anybody else who would like to share? Nobody else? Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing and uh, we'll just check attendance. Okay, teacher. I, uh -huh. I I always drink water all day. Okay. Uh, I sometimes listening to music before that take um take my my break my my break break in the walk. Uh huh. I always listen to music. Mm -hmm. Before, excellent. Before, mm, before, eh, antes de 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 mi cena. Before on the breakfast. In dinner, dinner. Uh huh. Dinner. Dinner. Before dinner. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Only two sentences. Um, yes, teacher. Okay. And the third one? Yes, teacher, dos. Uh, but it's okay. Thank you so much, Erica. You did it very good. Thank you for sharing. Ernesto, um, tengo algo otro voluntario? Ernesto, please. Yes, teacher. Okay, thank you. I always drink coffee milk in breakfast. Mm -hmm. Sometimes read my book English. I always listen to music in the house. Okay, excellent. You did an excellent job. Your sentences are grammatically correct. Thank you so much for participating. Anybody else? I mean, man? No? Daisy, thank you. Hey, I always drink coffee for breakfast. I never go out with my friends. I usually go to the market on my day off. Okay, excellent, Daisy. They are grammatically correct. You did a very excellent job. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Alguien más que quisiera leer? Very good, Daisy. Thank you so much. Uh, si no hay más comentarios, entonces pasaríamos a chequear a Teacher, it's a correct. For example, I often to read a newspaper. I often read. 
I often read a newspaper. Is it correct or not? Yes, it's correct. Okay. Uh, I can read the newspaper. I okay. Often read the newspaper. Yes, excellent. Any other question or participation? Um, okay. So let's check it in Daisy del Carmen Cepeda. Present teacher. Thank you, Daisy. Edwin Antonio Torres. Present. Thank you, Edwin. Erika Jaminet Orellana. Present teacher. Thank you, Erika. Ernesto Antonio Espinosa. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Jose Alberto. Or antes, él ya se retiró, me escribió en el chat que se iba a retirar. Estuvo por ahí José Alberto Quijada. José Francisco Martínez. José Francisco Martínez. Jose David Mejía. Jose David Mejía. Juan Carlos Morán. Juan Carlos Padilla. Present. Thank you. Karen Liliana. Catherine Yvonne. Roberto Barbie Nemos. Present. Thank you, Roberto. Ruth Noemi. Vida Ester Pérez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Continue then. Right, for the questions, so you remember the formula. Let's remind it uh, for questions. Okay, para preguntas, recuerdan cuál era la formula? Primero, eh, vamos a empezar con eh, do o does, que el auxiliar que vamos a usar porque es pues, siempre parte del tema del presente simple. Y cuando hacemos eh, just no questions, empezamos con el auxiliar do o da, dependiendo de el sujeto, que es lo que eh, va a continuación. El sujeto que viene después, eh, colocamos después del sujeto la palabra ever, ever, luego de ever, colocaremos el verbo, luego del verbo, complement, y luego del complement, el signo de interrogación o pregunta que siempre va pues nada más al final. Ahora, ¿recuerdan para qué sujetos utilizamos do? ¿Cuándo usamos do? ¿Para cuáles sujetos? I, you, we, they. I, you, we, they. Excellent, Juan Carlos. Thank you so much. And that... He, 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 it, he, he, it, it. Excelente. He, she, it. He, Solo he. para la tercera persona singular. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's for singular. So, with do. Mm -hmm. Do. So, we can say to your classmate. Mm -hmm. 
Ok, si queremos saber, ¿y tus compañeros eh, siempre participan en clases? ¿O tus compañeros... Um, so, ¿Cuál sería para preguntar por ellos? Do. De. Mm -hmm. Empezaremos con tú. Do. Do, do. Your. Ah, excelente. Do your. Your. Eh, classroom, classroom, classmates, classmate, uh huh, your classmates, uh -huh. always participate, participate in class, uh -huh. y finalmente pondríamos el signo de pregunta y ya nos queda. Do your classmates always participate in class? Y ahí pueden ver cómo hemos seguido la estructura. Primero el auxiliar, do. Ahí está. Aquí está el auxiliar, do. Luego el sujeto, que serían tus compañeros de clase. Your classmates. El, um, permítanme que no puse el ever. <laughs> Ay, Mateo, ya. Do your classmates ever. No es ever. Oh, yeah. Es ever en vez de el ever. Sí. A veces odio la pizarrita virtual. No. Ahí está, no se borra. Ok, so it would be do, siempre mayúscula al inicio. Do your class ever. Do your classmate ever. Ok, y ahí tenemos tú, que es el auxiliar, el eh, sujeto, your classmates, uh, the word ever, then the verb participates, and the complement in class, plus the question mark. Ahora, si quisiera saber en particular, como decir, eh, quiero saber si... Um, ella, o decir Esther, Esther participa en clases, quiero saber si Esther siempre participa en clases. Does Esther ever participate in class? Ajá. Does Esther ever participate in class? Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Excellent. So the only change is going to be el, el auxiliar, ¿verdad? Das. Porque ahora el sujeto es Esther, que es una eh, tercera persona singular, ella. Y ever, palabra ever, the first participate, and then the complement in class. So, do you have questions with this? No questions? Okay, ahorita les mando aquí lo que acabamos de escribir en un grupo de WhatsApp. Ya les había compartido las... Eh, el de las oraciones, ahora la estructura de las preguntas y pues ya explicamos también cómo funcionan estos adverbs. ¿Do you still have questions? ¿Hay preguntas? No. Ok. Eternal questions podemos ya... 
seguir con el ejercicio que tenemos ahí en otro momento. Compartir nuevamente. Y ahí está. Ya con esto, pues, eh, podemos realizar. Oh, déjenme compartir todo el texto. Ok. Con esto ya podemos realizar el ejercicio que tenemos acá, que es colocar el, el adjetivo o la palabra. En este caso ya tenemos ever. Eh, tenemos acá usually que ya está hecho. So what do you usually have for breakfast? Now, tenemos que colocar ese often, ese ever, sometimes, usually. Y el hardly ever. Les voy a dar tiempo para que analicen a dónde iría cada uno de esos um, adverbs o palabras que tenemos ahí en paréntesis y luego compartimos.
Have you finished? Yes. Okay, I volunteer to read the next one in part B. Part A says, what do you usually have for breakfast? Part B. Well, I often have coffee, cereal, and juice. Excellent. Next, volunteer. Do you volunteer? Do you, do you? Do you? Yes, it's a, do you ever eat breakfast at girl? Excellent, Esther, thank you so much. Volunteer to continue, I. I no. I. Hey, teacher, sometimes I have brave, brave fat at my desk. Excellent. That is one option. Sometimes I have breakfast at my desk. Excellent. And the other one is? Mm. I have sometimes. Mm. No. You, do you write for breakfast? Okay, Erika. So it's good. In la primera, Erika, yes. I, so you can say sometimes I have breakfast at my desk. Y la otra sería ponerlo después del sujeto. El sujeto es I. Entonces, ¿no te haría? I do you, okay. Erika? I sometimes have Right at my desk. Excelente. Muy bien, Erika. And next, Juan Carlos, the question, do you? Do you usually eat right for breakfast? Excellent. Or usually do you eat right for breakfast? Is correct? And that mm -hmm. applies only in sentences. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the first option was the correct. La primera opción fue la correcta. Do you usually eat rice for breakfast? And yes, it is a good question. Muy buena pregunta. Eh, con usually, sometimes, podemos aplicar la excepción solamente en oraciones, cuando estamos haciendo oraciones. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Eh, last one. No. The last answer. La última respuesta, no. No. I think I think No, I I hardly ever have right. Excellent. No, I hardly ever have right. Excellent. And then in part B. En la parte B, tenemos que hacer un scramble. No sé si avanzaron en eso o necesitarían tiempo. Mm -hmm. Part B is to honor scramble. Ahí tenemos que ponerlas en orden, desenredar estas palabras y ponerlas en orden a manera de hacer una oración. Por ejemplo, tenemos que poner I have breakfast on never weekend. Siguiendo el orden, ya ponemos aquí, I never have breakfast on weekends. Y así tendríamos que um, poner en orden de la 2 a la 4. Necesitamos ordenar esas tres oraciones. I'll give you time. I hardly ever eat at not at work. Thank you. 
Okay, let's listen the number two. What is the answer for number two? What do you have? Or you need more time? Hey, teacher. Yeah. Yes. I hardly, I hardly ever eat a snack uh, at work. Excellent, Ernesto. That is correct. I hardly ever eat snacks at work. Number three, volunteer. I teach. Don't I, I sometimes eat pasta for dinner. Excellent. I sometimes eat pasta for dinner. Excellent. And number four. Erika? Uh, I, I often, I often have dinner with my family. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much, Erika. Thank you so much for reading. And then um, let's move to... Um, well, I think that we will go to the reading part. And this is the last exercise in this section. It says eating for good luck. So, eating for good luck. I think it's the last one in the platform. So let's see what we have here. I want to check if we have the audio here or how is it done? In the platform, we have the reading, eating for good luck. And I think it has the audio. So I'm going to share the screen with you so that we can listen. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll read an article about special foods. You will also develop skills in scanning and reading for details. On New Year's Day, many people eat special foods for good luck in the new year. Some Chinese people eat tangerines. 
tangerines are round. Round foods end and begin again, like years. It is a Jewish custom to eat apples with honey for a sweet new year. Greeks eat vasilopita, bread with a coin inside. Everyone tries to find the coin for luck and money in the new year. In Spain and some Latin American countries, people eat 12 grapes at midnight on New Year's Eve. One grape for good luck in each month of the new year. On New Year's Day in Japan, people eat mochi, rice cakes, for strength in the new year. Some Americans from southern states eat black-eyed peas and rice with colored greens. The black-eyed peas are like coins, and the greens are like dollars. Okay, after the reading, there is an exercise where I would like to know if you have any question about the vocabulary. Tenemos la lectura y después de la lectura, pues hay algunas preguntas acerca de esta lectura. So this is what we have. Let's read again. They said that for, um, some Chinese people eat tangerines. Tangerines are round, round food and, and begin again like years. It's a Jewish custom to eat apples with honey for a sweet new year. Greek eat vasilopita, a spread with a coin inside. Everyone tries to find the coin for good luck and money in the new year. Tenemos alguna pregunta de las tres primeras um, párrafos? ¿O estamos bien con el vocabulario? Okay, I guess we are okay. Then the next one, in Spain and some Latin American countries, people eat 12 grapes at midnight, one New Year's Eve, one grape for good luck in each month of the New Year. Then on New Year's Day in Japan, people eat mochi, rice cake, for strength in the New Year. And the last one says some Americans from South and States eat black eyed peas and rice with color greens. The black eyed peas are like coins and the greens are like dollars. Tienen preguntas acerca del vocabulario o todo está claro? Any word? No? Okay, so if there are no questions, we can uh, complete the exercise that we have here that is complete according to what we remember about the reading. It says, uh, some Chinese people eat tangerines. Tangerines are like years. So what is the correct response here? Is that round, sweet, or acid? Wow. He's got it wrong. Okay, round. Now, some Jewish people eat apples with for a sweet year. Okay. 
Number three, Rick, are it vasilopita bread with inside? A coin. And four, in people eat 12 breaks for good luck in the new year. Spain. Spain. Spain, okay. Now, the Japanese eat cake for strength in the new year. Okay. Rice. Rice. Rice, okay. Now, some Americans eat black eyed peas. Black eyed peas are like. Points. Points. Okay, so as you can see, all of your answers were correct. You have a very, very good memory. So you, you memorize the reading, basically. <laughs> yeah, because there is one question for each part of the article, so you did it excellent. Um, okay, so do you have any question about uh, the section number four? We already finished that one. Tienen alguna pregunta? No question. No questions. Any, okay. So uh, tomorrow we will start the unit number, and I guess let me share back again with you. So the topic is I can't skate very well. So let me continue sharing. So this is the topic of unit uh, 10. So vamos, esta es la sección 5. El día de mañana vamos a empezar y pues recuérdense que esta semana tenemos clase. Además de mañana, martes, miércoles también. Recuerden que tienen que tener terminada la plataforma, todos los ejercicios con un mínimo del 80% y lo mismo es con la asistencia. Recuerden que la asistencia, eh, no hay manera de, de engañar Zoom pues esto va contando los minutos que usted ha estado conectado. Eh, comentaban que el miércoles pues van a estar depelados y eh, pues eh, ah, tal vez hay alguna manera de que pues no más que salgan de su turno, coman un poco y duerman y poner una alarma para que los despierte para la clase y aunque estén conectados, eh, si sienten que están muy mal, del de pelo, pues no enciendan la cámara, pero sí es importante que estén conectados y pues participar en la medida de lo posible, porque pues ya ven que es el único chance que tenemos para practicar speaking, estar, hablar un poco, interactuar entre compañeros y etcétera. Eh, clarificar dudas y ampliar también los temas de la plataforma. Es que pues ya, ya, ya pues estamos a un par de pasitos determinar su básico de los así que pues esperaría yo contar con todos ustedes que son los que siempre se han conectado eh, por lo menos estos dos días que faltan para que no vayan a tener ningún inconveniente a la hora de pues, querer descargar su certificado um, el topic I can't skate very well entonces hemos estado repasando el presente simple y ahora le sumamos adverbios de frecuencia no sé si hay algún tema que quisieran repasar uh, para la última clase o nos quedamos nada más terminando la sección 5. Esta sería I can't escape very well. Este es bien corto. Es del uso del auxiliar. Can. But that's pretty simple. But anyways, if you want to review something, let me know. Déjenme saber, igual puede ser el básico uno, si hay algo que siento que todavía no lo dominan muy bien, podemos eh, repasarlo. Solo me avisan con tiempo, más tardar el día de mañana, en caso que recuerden algún tema que les esté dando dificultad o tengan dudas todavía sobre el uso del presente. Ya eh, habíamos dicho, pues, eh, consta del verbo to be y el presente siempre con los demás. 
If no, well, let's start checking the vocabulary. El vocabulario que vamos a estar eh, utilizando en esta sección 5 es relacionado a los deportes. Vamos a escuchar. Sport and season vocabulary. So let's watch. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn vocabulary related to popular sports in the U.S. and Canada. Let's get started by listening and practicing the vocabulary. Sports seasons in the U.S. and Canada. In the spring, people play golf and play soccer. In the summer, people play baseball, play tennis, play volleyball, and go swimming. In the fall, People play football, go bike riding, and go hiking. In the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, go ice skating, and go skiing. Now it's your time to put this vocabulary into practice. I would like for you to describe the sports that you play in different seasons. For example, in the spring, I play soccer. In the summer, I go swimming. In the fall, I play football. In the winter, I play basketball. Try to give as many examples as you possibly can. Think about your family, friends, and co-workers, and the sports that they play. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Football. Okay, um, this vocabulary is related to sports and season. So, in you have it here in the material that you downloaded. So, let me make it bigger for you. I know. It's quite small. Okay, and there we have it. So, it says sports seasons in the US and Canada. So, sports, we know, so in deportes, our seasons would be what's the meaning of seasons? Seasons? Estaciones. Estaciones. Las estaciones, exacto. Se refiere a las estaciones del año. Uh, so we have the first one is spring. It says in the spring. Yes, esta que está acá, in spring. Spring sería? Primavera. Primavera, exacto. And then we have uh, in summer. In the summer. Verano. Es, es verano, exacto. And fall. Es otoño. Otoño. Otoño, excelente. And then the last one is winter. Invierno. Invierno, yes. Exacto, so ahí están las cuatro estaciones. And we have this vocabulary. In the spring, people play golf and play soccer. Then we have, luego tenemos, uh, in the fall, people play football, bike riding, and go hiking. In the summer, people play ba baseball, play tennis, play volleyball and go swimming. And finally, in the winter, people play hockey, play basketball, and go ice skating, go skiing. Hay alguna de estas que no reconozcamos, ya que pues, uh, bueno, son deportes que algunos no, no, no se juegan acá. Más que todos los que se juegan allá en invierno, pues allá hay hielo, hay nieve en la mayoría de las... So it says they play hockey, uh, basketball, ice skating, and skiing. 
esos dos últimos son similar as ice skating es patinaje, patinaje sobre hielo. Y go skiing es esquiar. Esto es, 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 Estos son los ice skating, sería este dibujito de acá que tiene los patines de hielo. Y skiing es esquiar, es en esta como tablita delgada. Y los demás, pues, go bike riding, es ir montar bicicleta, ir a montar bicicleta. En go hiking es ir a hacer senderismo, es caminatas en, en montañas, senderismo. Then we have baseball, tennis, volleyball, swimming, and soccer. Okay, so that is it about the vocabulary. And then we have a conversation titled, I love sports. And I'm gonna come and I love sports, but let's listen to the audio. And the winner, I Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn how to ask and answer simple present WH questions. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's get started by listening to a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. So, Justin, what do you do in your free time? Well, I love sports. Really? What sports do you like? Hmm. Hockey, baseball, and soccer are my favorites. Wow, you're a really good athlete. When do you play all these sports? Oh, I don't play these sports. I just watch them on television. Do you play sports or watch a lot of sports? Now I would like to show you how to form simple present WH questions. Let's start by analyzing the chart on the screen. Simple present WH questions. What sports do you play? I play hockey and baseball. Who do you play baseball with? I play with some friends from work. We have a team. Where do you play? We play at Hunter Park. How often do you practice? We practice once or twice a week. When do you practice? We practice on Sundays. What time do you start? We start at 10 o'clock in the morning. The goal of using WH questions is to obtain more detailed information from someone. In this case, we want to know everything about the person's response, I play baseball. So we ask, what sports, who, where, how often, when, what time? In order to form simple present WH questions, we can follow this next formula. WH word plus do or does plus the subject plus the verb plus some kind of complement. Let's analyze a couple of questions now. In the example, where do you play? The WH word is where then we add the auxiliary verb do. After that, we add the subject you. Next, we add the verb play. Finally, we add the complement. In this case, we don't have a complement because from our previous question and answer, we understand that we're talking about baseball. There's one particular question that I would like to point out. Who do you play baseball with? This type of question may sound a little strange in some languages because of the location of the words who and with. So I would like to explain the following. We can ask this question in two ways. The most common in American English is who do you play baseball with? The other way is by saying, with whom do you play baseball? It's not very common, but it's correct and formal to express yourself like this. So to understand the question, who do you play baseball with? Let me write a quick formula. Who 
plus do or does plus subject plus the verb plus noun plus wait. As the example shows, we start our question with who. Next, we put an auxiliary verb, do. After that, the subject, you. Next, we need to add the verb and noun, play baseball. I would like to point out that sometimes it's not necessary to add a noun, just the verb so we can easily say, who do you play with, without adding baseball. Finally, we add with and the question mark. Now it's your turn to practice making simple present WH questions. If possible, practice with the partner. And okay, so well, for tomorrow we will review the questions. Vamos a repasar lo de las preguntas y a explicar más bien y a tratar de utilizar las preguntas que van con with. Eh, que es lo que pues es un poquito a veces se sale de, de, de la fórmula que se estaba explicando en el video y vamos a practicar también la conversación. Así es que nos quedamos hasta acá por el día de hoy. Gracias a todos por haberse unido, por su participación muy importante y nos veo mañana. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye. Bye.